And we're live. Welcome, everybody. Glad to see you all here. Welcome. My name is Matt. I am from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and you are joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean ro related. RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Happy Monday, everybody. Every Monday, we are live right here on YouTube, hanging out with you, talking Royal Caribbean cruises. Thank you for joining us here on this Monday. We have a lot of people waiting in chat. Love that. Tony Diaz, what's going on? David Wills, how's it going? Dennis Orman from Nevada. We got Matt M from Connecticut. Uh, Daryl Brown from, I think, Charleston, South Carolina. We've got Grace in the house. Cod Squad joining us. Shannon Ford is here. Hello, Shannon. Uh, USF Frank. Debbie is here. Toya, hello. Fatima, how's it going on? Don Goldstein, Commander. Good to see you. Krista Collins is here. Beverly, hello. Uh, David Sachs. Nick from Singapore. We're back in my office. Nick, hope you're doing well, my friend. Takesha, you already know what it is. Yes. It's time to talk Royal Caribbean. I'm going to move this a little bit more out of my face. Hope you guys can still hear me. Uh, I want to make sure you can see all of this. It, it takes a lot of work to get this ready, okay? I don't just wake up looking like this. I go like this, and then I'm ready. But that's a lot of effort. <laughs> Susie Junko, hello. Javon is here. Welcome. Lizzie Ames, hello. Uh, Fatima says, got her first question for today. What do you think about Royal Caribbean asking for volunteers to take a mock cruise? It's very intriguing. No question about it. I mean, a lot of people, in fact, over 100,000 people thought, that's a great idea. I'm going to sign up. I love the idea. I mean, it remains to be seen how many of those 100,000 plus people are going to be able to actually be a volunteer or how they'll be selected or a variety of other concerns. But it's kind of interesting because no other cruise line so far has put out a form like this that I'm aware of anyway. And uh, if you read on RoyalGreenBlog.com today, yeah, you heard right. Over 100,000 people have signed up and said, yes, I want to be a volunteer, including I'm betting a lot of people in this chat right now. Uh, Steve Cohen, so it seems like Mariner and Navigator will be the first ships to sail. That is, I mean, it's pure speculation, Steve, but it, the reason why that seems to be the guess as to the ships that will probably start first is because primarily those ships already offer three and four night sailings. And when Royal Caribbean is going to be able to restart operations, they have said they're going to start with short sailings to, you know, Coco Key. And uh, those ships already scheduled to go there. So it seems like a natural fit. And that's why, Steve, I, I, I probably agree with you that it seems that way. But, of course, that's just, you know, for all we know, it can end up being Oasis and Empress. Doubtful. But you know what I mean? Like, it, there's there's no indication yet. Uh, Jimbo's wishes. Brad Pitt in the house. I know I look like Brad Pitt, but believe it or not, it's just Matt. Hello. Uh, Albert, what do you think about Royal Caribbean? Oh, we talked about that one, Albert. There you go. Uh, Kelly Hardy from MEI Travel. Hello to you and welcome. Brian Smith from Michigan. We've got Carol here. Welcome. Uh, Diane Lane, I have an 11-day cruise in January 2021, and it's no longer online, and no one has gotten in touch with me. Yeah, um, I wrote about this at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com earlier today. So the, the cruises in 2021 between January and November... 2021 that are over seven nights so eight nights and up um are not show from the u.s are not showing up on the website they're still not they're not canceled but they've been taken off the website at least it appears that way um in terms of booking whether or not they're going to be changed you know shortened canceled don't know remains to be seen so um diane you you're not missing anything you're not like out of the loop um it's something to keep an eye on certainly and i will definitely convey if anything has changed to you guys for sure so Jeanette Rodriguez on book for Odyssey of the Seas out of Rome in May 21. What do you think would what do you think would this happen? Oh, will the cruise happen? Like all sailings, guys, whether we're talking about January cruises or May cruises or March cruises, there is just simply no way to know what is going to happen. Um, I can sit here and I can tell you, yeah, sure, it'll happen, or no way it'll not happen. But I don't know that. I'm just making it up. Nobody really knows. So unfortunately. We've all got to kind of wait around and figure out. If you want a longer answer as to why no one really knows, check out willmycruisehappen.com. It's a, uh, it's a real thing. It explain, goes into much more detail there. But essentially, there's not enough information and too many variables to really know if a particular sailing is going to happen or not. So we still got to wait a little bit longer to get a better answer there. Michelle B., with the good news today regarding Moderna, do you think 
rail equipment may want to wait out to widespread vaccine distribution. I'm not sure that's their plan. In fact, the healthy sale panel protocols were based without based on a world, a scenario in which the vaccine is not there. The vaccine will make everybody's life easier in that regard in terms of getting started. But I don't believe the cruise lines, Royal Caribbean included, are interested in waiting there. They've developed protocols that they believe can operate safely um, without a vaccine through multi-layered approach to keeping guests safe, right? It's not just one thing. It's not, okay, we're putting all our hopes on this. It's a combination of a bunch of different ideas, right? Social distancing, limiting the capacity on the ship, wearing masks, um, you know, quarantine and isolation protocols, uh, enhanced sanitation, a variety of other things that are, as well that are part of these healthy sail panel protocols. And, come, you know, not individually, none of them, and testing, of course, testing is a big one. That's probably one of the biggest ones. But individually, none of them do it at all. But together, it creates this kind of a mesh, which really works well. So I think their plan, as far as I can tell, based on everything they said in the public, is that, no, they're not going to wait for a vaccine but certainly when a vaccine comes around, and maybe it's going to be a lot sooner than we thought. That'd be great. Um, but they're not waiting for that per se. Ebony York, hello and welcome. We got Jan Fagan in the house. Welcome. Kay Palmer, what's going on? Jordy, 2453. Hey, Matt, love your videos. I just booked my first cruise on Harmony for February. I really hope you get to go on that cruise, Jordy. Welcome. And thanks for the very kind words there. Um, let's see. Uh, Jess Gordon, will the cruise lines require guests to get the vaccines after the test cruises? But before cruising resumes after test sailings, there's been no indication, Jess, that's any there'll be any requirement regarding the vaccine. Again, as I mentioned, the healthy cell protocols are based uh, in a scenario without the vaccine uh, as part of it. And I don't we have no reason to believe that they'll require the vaccine. I mean, number one, it's pretty hard to prove that you've actually had it. But never mind that um, there, there's no indication to believe that will be the case. Hey, Mark, the shark is here. Welcome. Uh, Tiffany is here. Hello, Tiffany. I hope both of our cruises sail. The letter that Michael Bailey sent out today didn't leave any indication these cruises are not sailing. Yeah, we'll have some more information about that at realcoreanblog.com tomorrow. Um, but listen, Tiffany, let's hope for the best, right? That's what we're here for. Let's hope that all our cruises, including the ones I've got coming up in January, are still going to have a chance to sail. That would be fantastic. So, uh, Terry Gallant, what's up, Terry? Hey, Matt, you sound so much better tonight. Tune up that singing voice. Yeah, so this I got this microphone working, and it's a directional mic, so it's not picking up the echo. Because if I talk like over here, you probably can't even hear me, right? I've got to be like right next. I got to make. I got to be really close to the mic, and then you can hear me really well. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that the sound quality is better today. Uh, Pippa from Ocean Time is here. Do you think that FCC expiration date will be extended? You know, it's interesting, Pippa. Um, I think it's a good question. Obviously, we just saw over the weekend that Royal Caribbean is extending the expiration date for FCCs, at least for this year. Now, that doesn't really affect most people because those FCCs, if you had a future cruise credit that was going to expire this year, you probably got it before the F, before the pandemic and the shutdown. Um, but for most people have now, in fact, I think everybody now has uh, FCCs that expire at the end of next year. And Pippa, I think the answer to your question truly is going to be they're going to wait and see how things are where they are, you know, come September, October, November of next year to see if, if it's necessary to do so. So not the answer you're looking for, but I think it's the reality. I don't think they're going to be able to answer that question anytime soon. Uh, Molly Gilchrist is here. When should we expect the next announcement regarding the next round of cancellations or a restart date? Boy, that's a great question. And you know what? Royal Caribbean really doesn't divulge that information in advance. We rarely get more than maybe a couple hours heads up on this. And even then, that has been rare. Um, they really don't put it out until they're ready to announce something right there. So, yeah, um, it's, it, it is what it is. Uh, Nick, how will Royal Up works? How soon will we know will it be upgraded? So Royal Up is Royal Caribbean's stateroom upgrade program. You'll get an email, Nick. It's one of those things like they'll contact you, get an email with the offer, and then they have until about, I believe, 48 hours before your cruise to decide if your offer is actually accepted or not. So there's no indication as to when it will or will not be accepted up just, you know, from when you submit it all the way up until 48 hours before your cruise. And again, Royal Up just asks what's Royal Up. Royal Up is a stateroom upgrade program. As you get close to your sailing, Royal Caribbean will give you the opportunity to bid for a stateroom upgrade. So what that means is they'll say, hypothetically, if these room categories are, that, you know, are higher than your category were available, what would you pay for them? And you place a bid and it's a blind bid. So you have no idea what, what anyone else bid on them. 
But if your bid is accepted, you get to move up for a fraction of the cost as if you were to pay it, obviously, out of pocket for you know, the whole thing right there. So, um, Henry, um, I'll be hap I'm happy to answer your question. I know I don't get to every single question, but give me some time, dude. Don't spam the chat with the same question over and over again. It's, it's just it's annoying, quite frankly. So just take your time. I'll get to as many as I can. So, uh, Anthony Lawson, do you think the cruises will only be going out of Florida or will they get Galveston up and going soon too? Anything's possible, Anthony. The only thing we do know is that Royal Caribbean said initially it will be drive market cruises. Galveston is kind of a drive market. I mean, there are a lot of people who go on cruises out of Galveston who are in the area. I think Florida is obviously the natural, most likely place to start first, but Galveston still offers something different. And obviously, um, there are cruise options there as well. Um, so I don't think it'd be, uh, let me put it this way. I think that San Juan, Puerto Rico probably has a less of a chance of starting up sooner than Galveston, if that makes you feel any better. Um, but anything's possible. Nothing's been ruled out at this point. So you really should keep that in mind and, uh, you, you never know. So, uh, Jamie, what's up? any inside information on black Friday? I have no inside information on that. I'm eager to know about that as well. Jamie, uh, I, I, if I recall correctly, last year, I think we got a heads up on what the Black Friday deal was perhaps the weekend before, if not like that Monday or Tuesday before. So it's forthcoming in the next couple of days. So as soon as I do know about it, you know I'll be posting about it at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Ron Ladowski, what's up, dude? Any hint from Royal Caribbean might be releasing the new, when? Uh, the newest May to December 22, Seven Night Caribbean cruises this week. There's never any heads up on that, Ron. Um, as Ron is, is correct, if you're not aware, um, at some point this week, Royal Caribbean will release the seven night Caribbean cruises for 2022. And, uh, these are just the seven night cruises. it will be at some point this week, Ron. It's just, it's one of those, it's just all of a sudden it'll just magically show up at some point. So, um, uh, Tri-State Killer wants to know, does what happened on Sea Dream have any effect on big cruise start? That's a great question. Tri-State, I am not sure. It's certainly not helping them by any means. It's not, you can't, you know, if you're the cruise lines, you're certainly not going to bring that up. If anything, you're saying that's not how we're going to do it, but it's not going to help their cause uh, by any means. So remains to be seen how much it'll weigh, if anything, with the CDC, but it's certainly not helping anything. Uh, TML, are you concerned that the likely change in the government will cause the CDC to reverse their decision? Um, Not necessarily. I think even when, the, you know, when the new administration takes over, they're, they got bigger fish to fry than what the CDC is doing with, uh, with, in regards to the cruise industry. Um, I, I just don't think, I, I think that, um, I don't think there's any reason at this point to believe that other than just pure speculation. So, so could things change? Of course, anything could change. You never know, but, um, I'm not gonna, I, I think it would be foolhardy to speculate because we just simply don't know. It, it, it's, it's just, you know. Um, I don't think it's necessarily like flipping coin, but it's just, it's impossible to know. So I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping that for the, from the perspective purely of good faith, the CDC will allow the cruise lines to, you know, give it a shot and, and prove it. That's what the whole point of the conditional sale order. You know, the conditional sale order sounds like on the surface, oh, cruise lines are able to restart operations. Yeah, kind of. If. They do a bunch, this, 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 and this. A lot of things have to go correctly and they have to get approval for it. So the idea that because the no sale order has been lifted, the cruise lines are going to be able to restart like that, far from it. The CDC still has supreme control over which ships and which cruise lines are able to restart operations. So I don't think there's really a need for it, but, you know, that's just my opinion. I need to bring back the no sale order, I should say. Uh, Brian McNichols is here. Oh no, I'm late. and I missed the sweet mic placement. I'm getting all the levels on that velvety voice now. Well, I thank you, Brian. It's good to see you again, my friend. Got to get into my radio voice. Talk like this. Coming up next is the weather and news here on KROY Radio Cruise. Ninja Rod, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, Trey Greeny with Royal Caribbean running the double cruise credit special next year. Do you know if you get quadruple cruise points if you book a suite? Yes. If you book a suite, you'll get four points per night. Um, of course, you just book the cruise before 21. But uh, yeah, you get four points per night for a suite with, you know, obviously double occupancy. If you book a solo in a suite, Trey, you'll actually get six points per night. So if you got to convince your wife... You need, 
to go on a solo cruise in a suite. Listen, honey, I'm doing it for the points, baby. It's not, it's not about me. It's all about you and the kids. There you go. There you go. Hey, Sharon Stockman is here. Hello, Sharon. Welcome. Jess wants to know, is there a possibility there will be a Black Friday sale in purchasing cruises and cruise planner purchases? Yes. I almost, Jess, while we don't have an official word on it, I would bet you there will be a sale. Now, the question, the better question, Jess, you should be asking is not if there will be a sale. Will it be a good sale? Will you, Jess Gordon, save money? And the answer is we don't know. The last couple of years, I got to be honest with you guys, the Black Friday deals haven't been anything spectacular. Now, in 2020, we have seen some pretty good sales, actually. I'm not talking about Black Friday. I'm just talking about in general. Um, one of the benefits of the cruise shutdown has been some pretty aggressive pricing. So it certainly stands to reason it's possible that um, we could see savings there. So I think there will be a sale, but I it, it remains to be seen um, if it will actually net you any money. It's just the nature of Royal Caribbean sales because Royal Caribbean's promotions, you know, they always, they're always they very flashy and they get your attention, certainly. But it's not an, it's never an across-the-board, everybody-saves-money kind of situation. It, certain sailings, depending on when you booked and what your rate was, may or may not benefit from it. Some people, there will always be some people who will save money on it, but it's not, again, it's not like buying jeans at the mall where yesterday the jeans were all $30 and tomorrow, yeah, right, jeans 30 bucks, right? Uh, so, and now they're all $25 or something like that, right? It's, it's a little more complex and it's really based sailing to sailing, so... Uh, Nick wants to know, any idea when will Royal Caribbean release the remaining sailings for 2022? They're starting to do that already, Nick. We already had Alaska 22 released last week, Seven Night Caribbean this week, and in about two weeks, uh, Europe. And then more beyond that, remains to be seen. We're waiting for Royal Caribbean to uh, say something about it. So, uh, Ron Ladowski, I heard that Royal Caribbean might be selling to the Dominican Republic in the future. Is this true? It is, yes. Um, it's right next to Labadee. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, they have offered very sporadic cruises to the Dominican in the past, nothing recently. But yes, there are some sailings there. I believe in they, those Dominican cruises came out in the last batch, like around uh, maybe late 21, early 2022. So let's hope so. I'd love to see some new ports right there. And Javon, at what age do crown and anchor points? At what point? Uh, sorry, Javon, I'm just scrolling too fast on me. At what age do crown and anchor points not transfer to your children? Once they turn... Once they become an adult, I forget if it's 18 or 21. Maybe someone in our chat can, can, can remind me of that if it's 18 or 21. But at whatever age it is, I think it's 18. They don't get that anymore. Kim Oakland with an epic first super chat of the day. Oh, Kim, I haven't seen any super chats yet or I missed them. So I'm starting them off. Happy Monday. Studio A is looking nice. Thank you, Kim. Very kind of you. You did not miss anything. This is our first super chat. Thank you, Kim, for your support. As always, you are super awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, it is 18. Thanks. That's That makes sense. Yep. At 18, you can play the lottery. You can join the army. And you're no lo You're on your own for crown and anchor points. So, Kenny K, what's up, dude? What do you What do you think the best Key West replacement port will be? Honestly, Sea Day. I think it'll just be a Sea Day. It's not a port. I know that. But I think that's the most realistic replacement temporarily. I mean, beyond that... I mean, listen, the other thing, possibly Cuba, if maybe that reopens. I don't know that's anytime soon again. That's a possibility. Uh, Grand Cayman is tr the traditional uh, backup port for there. I mean, Key West is a very small port. You can't get an Oasis class ship in there, right? You're talking about smaller ships to begin with. So Grand Cayman, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the neighborhood. That's the usual one for that. So uh, I'm at Aziz. Any confirmed date for voluntary test sailings? Nope. And what are the criteria for Royal Caribbean? We'll choose who's going to be on that test sailings. Great questions. And the answer is, I don't know. No one knows yet. Royal hasn't really said anything. It's kind of, it's kind of the confusing thing about the whole volunteer thing, which is awesome. I love that they're listening to, to their guests and they're taking uh, signups for it. But Ahmed, there has been zero zilch, nada input. Uh, beyond the fact that you have to be 18 years old, who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Share Stockman with a super chat. Oh, it's a big super chat as well. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon writes, Oasis Christmas Cruise in 2021 goes to the Dominican Republic. I'm on that cruise. Can't wait. All right, hang on, guys. Note to self. Book Christmas Cruise with Sharon Stockman. There you go. James Gatton is here. What's up, James? Hope you're rocking your Hawaiian t-shirt. Uh, Becky Menken from MEI Travel is in the house. Hello, Becky. Uh, Becky writes, I, re I will really miss Key West. I've always enjoyed that port. Absolutely. And, and cruising there was 
always the best way to get there because driving was, I mean, I, you got to do the drive once, but after that gets really boring really quickly. So, uh, Larry Watts, what's up, Larry? Hey, Matt, did they build a new terminal in the Port of Miami? They did, Terminal A. Royal Caribbean built that. That opened in 2018. Oh my goodness, has it been that long? Uh, yes, they, they it opened in in uh, in 2018. Yeah, because it was when Symphony got here. Um, 2018, a Terminal A. It's absolutely beautiful. It's amazing. It it has transformed what the embarkation and disembarkation process should be like. It's it's incredible, quite frankly. So, Dallas Spearman says no more Key West. I missed that. Yeah, unfortunately, the residents of Key West voted in this past election to ban cruise ships beyond 1,500 passengers, which pretty much bans every single Royal Caribbean ship out there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. There's other places in the Caribbean to visit. So, uh, Paul T., if I booked a seven-night cruise and they're only allowing five nights, so they're not, Paul. Um, the CDC, I'll stop you right there. The CDC says any cruise that's uh, that no more than seven nights. So your seven-night cruise, totally fine right there. Now, could that be shortened? Yeah, the CDC does um, ha reserve the right to be able to um, to be able to shorten sailings as they see fit. But again, that remains to be seen if and when they'll ever use that or exercise that ability. Javon with the super chat. Can't wait for the Royal Caribbean blog 2022 group cruise. All right, guys. Where uh, Javon, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use your your message here as an opportunity. Where do you, where do you guys want to go on a Royal Caribbean blog group cruise in 2022? Type it in chat right now. What, what kind of itinerary? would you want to do on a group cruise? James Sablin. What's up, James? Let me get to your question here. James, I have almost a little over 5,000 in cruise credit. Can't decide if to go all out one or two cruises or take four or five. I say you go all out, dude. I mean, listen, booking four or five is cool too. Trust me. I love booking a bunch of cruises as well, having a lot to look forward to. But I think, I think, I think you got to treat yourself. I think that's definitely the way to go. Alaska, Alaska. I'm seeing a lot of Alaska votes here. My goodness. ABCs. Now, Panama Canal would win if it's offered, but that's the hard part. Will it ever be offered? I don't know. Um, but Alaska, a lot of votes for Alaska. My goodness. I think, uh, listen, Alaska is compelling, man. I want to go back. I was supposed to go this year for Alaska. Didn't happen, obviously, but my goodness. Yeah, and, and try to say kill is right. After this year, treat yourself. You got to do that, right? Absolutely. I think it's definitely the way to go. All right, let's get back to your questions. Ron Snyder just joined. Hello, Ron. In case I missed it, what are the first cruises now planned for 21? Well, technically, it's uh, any cruises in January. There's 26 ships, or not 26, but there's a number of ships supposed to be sailing in, in January, but nothing official has been, been confirmed. The only ship, there is actually, I take that back, there is one ship that will absolutely be sailing in January, and that'll be Quantum of the Seas out of Singapore. Uh, that actually is starting up in December, so we're only about two weeks away from the first Royal Caribbean cruise, Royal Caribbean International cruise, to start up since March, and that'll be Quantum of the Seas in Singapore. And I think our, our friend uh, Nick, who's in chat, he's, actually, he's not booked on the first one, right, Nick? You're booked on one of the other ones, but um, boy, am I jealous. Yes, I did look up what it requires to be a resident of Singapore. No, it's not possible, but that looks amazing. But beyond that, I know what you're really asking. is like, okay, well, you know, Ron, like, what 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 cruises are actually gonna gonna be sailing? And Royal Caribbean has not released a firm startup plan. They've just kind of left it in this still we will see wait and see kind of situation. So yeah, nothing's really been updated there. Kim Oakland, ABC Islands. Yeah, I love ABC Islands as well. Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't. Oh, I hate flying. So flying to San Juan is not awesome. But once you're there, my goodness, I love Aruba Bonaire Curacao. Fantastic. And Beth Dickerson from MEI Travel is here. Hello, Beth. Beth says any cruise would be fun right about now. I'd agree with Beth. I've never been so excited to go to Nassau and, and, and just spend the, like, I don't care where we go. It'll be like, you know, there's a cruise. You're like, yeah, but don't you want to know where it goes? Nope, I don't care. There's a cruise? Sign me up. Like, I would love to do that. Henry, how do you feel about volunteering for Royal Caribbean? The, uh, do you think it's a good idea or not? I think it's a great idea. I mean, listen, I think that obviously when it comes to the volunteering, um, there's a lot of things that guests are going to have to do. This is not going to be a pleasure cruise. Like if you're imagining all the cruises you've ever taken in your life and this is an extension of that, it's not really that. There will be a relaxation component to it, but there are going to be mandatory things you have to do in order to help test things out. Um, so 
I, I'm not saying it's like work. And I'm not saying it's going to be like your best vacation ever, but it is on a cruise. It is a free cruise. Granted, you probably have to get there and there's risks associated with it. But as long as you're okay with that, I think it's fantastic. And listen, for Royal Caribbean standpoint, it's, it's, it's really an advantage for them to have a good pool of folks who they can draw on to be able to obviously help test these things out. It remains to be seen if at all the volunteers will be used. I mean, Royal Caribbean has said that they're primarily going to be using um, cruise line employees as well as um, maybe travel agents. And they said like maybe travel agents uh, to help test that out. Now, I think a lot of this may be, quite frankly, how many test sailings do they need to do? You know, are we talking, is each ship going to need to do, you know, one, three, 20? You know, if it gets to a point where they need that many people, absolutely. But if it's only a couple, maybe not. So let's we'll wait and see. But I love the idea. I signed up for it. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get on there. Hey, Kelly Hardy from MEI Travel is here. Hi, Matt. I'm so with you. I wouldn't care where the ship went. I can get on a ship. Let's go. Yes. Hey, Dave Lucas is here. Hope your commute was wonderful and easy today. Uh, Matt M wants to know, by the way, great name. Have you heard if early 2021 cruises will be eligible for lift and shift? Concern mine to make it cancel. They are. Yes, you can, Matt. Um, early 21, as long as there's a cruise available to move it to next year. So obviously you can't lift and shift a May 2022 cru a cruise, but you can't do a January, February, March, even some in April. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Fred Parker's here. What's up, Fred? Didn't you say that in another blog post that 100,000 people volunteered? That's crazy. Yeah, and not only did 100,000 people sign up, 100,000 people signed up in less than a week. I mean, wow, wow, we wow, 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 wow. Like, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of demand. Jason Peterson is here. Thomas D, Oasis of the Seas or Anthem of the Seas for a group cruise. Both are good choices, man. I mean, Thomas, you're asking me, like, you know, do you like filet mignon or do you like a T bone? Like, there's advantages to both. Uh, I will say, I mean, a there's Oasis and there is everything else, okay? Oasis of the Seas, fantastic, amazing ship. Quantum has its own unique uh, options as well. I'd probably lean a little more towards Oasis, but don't take that as a slight on Anthem because Anthem is fantastic. We did an Anthem of the Seas group cruise um, in 2019. Gosh, it's been so long now. Um, and we're doing another Anthem of the Seas group cruise in 2021 to Norway, and uh, it's a great ship to go on. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great stuff there. So, oh, Trace Akila, you're a Matt as well. Well, nice to meet you. Mary Pelosa, last time we went on Anthem of the Sea, someone got sick and it spread like wildfire because of the touch technology based on activities in the ship. How do you think this will affect the sailing now? It's a good question, Mary. So one of the things, one of the major components to obviously cruises restarting is tackling a scenario just like that. And there's going to be like, I mean, there's going to be a ton of enhanced sanitation on board the ship. I hope you like the smell of chlorine or bleach because you're going to smell a lot of it. I think more bleach than chlorine. I don't know what chlorine smells like. That's like pool. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You're going to smell a lot of, of industrial cleaner because part of the protocols is enhanced sanitation all around the ship. And I'll give you an example, Mary. I was on quantum of the seas when there was a um, neurovirus outbreak. Remember when neurovirus was the biggest problem you get on a cruise ship? Ah, the good old days. Anyway, uh, when I was on that, and actually Becky Menken was on that cruise with me, and Becky will tell you, um, they, they were going, once there was a confirmed outbreak or people had neurovirus, they were cleaning down that ship so much. I mean, it, you, the smell of bleach was very ever present. And in addition to that, it really did help. I felt very safe with that. So Mary, I think by that same token, I fully expect the, uh, the, the, the protocols to, uh, address those kinds of things right there as well. So yeah. And Dave C guys, no no, no politics in here. There's plenty of places on the internet to share your political views. This isn't one of them. So please keep it out of here. You've all been warned. Um, let's see here. Uh, James, well, now that they have uh, proof that it is. Oh, well, now they have proof that it is time and have. Wait, I'm sorry, James, you're the chat's going here. But time to get back to business. Hope they take that as a boost to get things going sooner than later. I agree, James. I agree 100 percent, man. Uh, I hope that. They, I mean, they're clear, Royal Caribbean is taking the time to get their act together, right? To get do everything they need to do, sort everything out, get everything put together, nice and you know they're they're not rushing back. We can tell this already because they could have technically restarted in December. Obviously, didn't happen. But you know they're they're trying to make sure they want to get it right. This is something that Royal Caribbean executives have been saying time and time and time again. 
We want to get it right. And so as a result, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're taking their time to make sure that the protocols and all these things are, are perfect so that when they do restart, they don't run into any surprises uh, or certainly mitigate the, the chances of that happening. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jess, should I purchase the key if I'm staying in a, a, a junior suite on alert and of uh, um, VP is uh, panoramic, right? I, I generally say if you're staying in a suite, junior suite's not really a suite. I generally don't think you should get the, the key at all, Jess. I'll be honest with you. I don't think you should get it. So here, there's a video on this channel why I don't think you should get it. It still applies. I don't think you should get it. So there you go. Uh, Catherine Bentley got a cruise booked in January. Think it'll be canceled too. Don't want to book a flight till we know. Yeah, that's that's tough to do. Number one, Catherine, check with your airline. A lot of airlines, a lot of them are still offering very flexible cancellation terms where you can cancel for any reason. There's no change fees. So obviously you have that to fall back on if that makes you feel a little bit better. But beyond that, uh, it remains to be seen, Catherine, what what it'll be, you know, what if there'll be more. I mean, there will be more cancellations, guys. Let's assume for a second. Assume for a second. Cruises do restart in January. It will not be 26 ships at once. It will not be every single ship. They only start with a couple of ships to begin with. They don't know which, which ones they are. Um, so you got to remember that. But by, by the same token, um, if I were you, I'd look for an airline that offers flexible cancellation terms. I know that. I don't know if they still offer it. I have to double check. As an example, I know that JetBlue was offering that. Southwest always offers that as their policy. There's no change fees. You just get a credit, obviously, back for that. Um, but check with the airline to make sure there's some... Um, flexible options if you want to cancel. So that way, if you do book your airfare and then the cruise is canceled, you're obviously not stuck. You have a, uh, you're good to go. Vivian Hickey wants to know, what do you mean by the key? Ah, yes. The key is a uh, program offered by Royal Caribbean in which you can pay to get certain benefits and enhancements, if you will, like uh, priority access uh, during embarkation day to get on the ship before a lot of other people. You can get your luggage um, stored for you while you're on board the ship on embarkation day while before your staterooms are ready. Um, you can get priority access at certain hours for certain signature activities like the sky pad or water slides where it's only available to people who have the key, which means obviously a whole lot less waiting. There's also a myriad of other benefits as well. Um, I don't I don't love the key. I don't recommend the key. Uh, and, and the reason is I think a lot of the benefits sound better than they really are. I think, number one, you can achieve a lot of the benefits if you just are willing to hustle or do a little more work on your end. Um, there is one perk you cannot replicate. That is the fact that when Royal Caribbean will will um, will store your luggage for you on embarkation day before your stateroom is ready, I think that's a very minor issue. I don't think it's, that's a big deal right there. So I would say you can skip that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we've got the... Uh, Oh, I gotta love the people who just love to spam the chat right there, right? Um, let's see here. AHN, uh, I was on one of the last sailings in March and they were cleaning everything. We had no issues, felt completely safe on board. And I let me tell you, I, I know exactly what you're talking about there, man. There's a lot of, you know, great, um, Royal, even before all of this, Royal Caribbean always took care of its guests, made sure that, you know, everything was as safe as they could be. They did a great job with it. I agree 100%. Sharon Stock with another super chat. Thank you, Sharon. Air to sea is fully refundable if Royal Caribbean cancels your cruise. There you go. That's an excellent point, Sharon. So going back to that question, if you book your airfare through Royal Caribbean, yes, you're going to pay a little bit more because there's a fee involved with it. However, if Royal Caribbean cancels your cruise on you, you are not, you get your money back refundable with that airfare. So it's called Air to Sea, like the number two. Air to Sea, if you Google it, you'll find it. You can book your airfare through there. And if you're worried about that, that's a great point, Sharon. I completely forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me about that. Great, great point. Um, Jess wants to know the difference between booking a balcony and below and purchasing the key. I'll tell you this about the key, Jess. And I'm not trying to defer to deflect your question. I think I'm gonna give you the I want to give you the best possible answer. And the best possible answer is I want you to check out the video that I've done here on this YouTube channel about why I don't recommend the key. I think it'll I think it'll give you a lot of insight as to why I'm telling you what it, it explains what it is and why you don't why you don't need to get it. So, hope that makes sense. Um, Blackbirds, any update on the volunteer list? They passed 100,000 volunteers today, so that's incredible. But beyond that, nothing else to to report. So, uh, Drew Walters, hey Matt, love your content. Thank you, my friend. Where are you based out of? I live in the Orlando area. In my mama's child too. Did you say Allure is getting an upgrade? Uh, they were supposed to, but they did not. 
Um, she was scheduled to get an amplification, an upgrade this year. Um, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19 and due to the industry shutdown and due to Royal Caribbean losing a lot of money, that did not occur. Now, Alert did get what's called a technical upgrade. So they worked on her navigation and her propulsion, but like no new restaurants were added, no new water slides. All the fun stuff was not added in order to save costs. Um, and Royal Caribbean said, and they said this a while ago, like a number of months ago, that they still intend to offer those upgrades, to make those upgrades, but it's really anyone's guess when that might actually happen. So, Ron Ladowski, one more oldie but goodie. Is the luxury package worth it? Answer, especially if you take a Royal Caribbean group cruise with the bat. <laughs> nice, nice. Keith Bruce, which cabanas do you recommend in Labadee? Over the water cabanas are fantastic, dude. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. Um, Jay Spiegel writes, the, regarding the key, I kind of liked having it, but won't get it again unless it's really cheap. There are sometimes, Jay, and that's a good point, if you can time a sale correctly, sometimes like the, the difference between the price of the key and Wi-Fi is like $2 a day more or something like that, which in that case, yeah, like it's like, why wouldn't you get it? Um, but I'm, I'm surprised, Jay, I know you very well, and I am shocked you went in that direction, but more power to you, dude. Nothing wrong with it. As long as you're happy with it, man, all that matters. Uh, Furman Reynolds, have you ever cruised that sale one? I have, yes. How is it going through customs? How long does it take? It's actually pretty easy. I did this um, in December 2019, one of the last cruises I took before the shutdown. It was super easy, dude. Like, I was expecting a lot worse. And, in fact, we were all expecting. We was a group cruise. We were all sitting there like, oh, boy, how long is it going to take for, for us to get in there? And then it was like, there's no line, dude. Just go in. And I was like, so it's kind of hit or miss. There are lines. I'm not going to not gonna pretend there isn't one. But we actually went, we just got real lucky, I guess. There was no lines at all. It was crazy. Kirk Overstreet, do they change port itineraries yearly? Oasis only one that goes to Jamaica. To some extent, yes. Um, itineraries, every year there's there's new release. As an example, um, uh, Kirk, they're releasing new itineraries this week for seven-night Caribbean cruises in summer 2022. That's coming out at some point this week, right? So that'll cover basically April through, I don't know, September or something like that, maybe October. Um, that'll cover that time period. So periodically, there are new itineraries that come out there, and sometimes ships get new sailings. Sometimes it's still the same. It's not that every time every time there's a new itinerary release, there's completely new sailings offered. Sometimes it just makes sense. It's like, no, oh, the ship is doing well. It's going to these places. People seem to like it. Let's go there. So, all right, Jay. Well, you, I'll tell you the story one day. Too long for chat. How about on a cruise ship, my friend? Over drinks. Uh, Stan Rock wants to know what are the perks of owning Royal Caribbean stocks over a long period of time. Your investment will pay off, and you'll be able to retire on it. Or at least make a profit. Um, I know what you're asking. Like, if you're a shareholder, are there any benefits um, with Royal Caribbean if you go on a cruise? There are. Um, you can actually qualify. If you own at least 100 shares of Royal Caribbean stock, you can qualify for some onboard extra onboard credit. Um, you have to go through. There's a form to fill out. It's pretty straightforward. But, um, you know, you can do that, and that'll get you uh, your, your, your shareholder um, benefits. And... Um, but you have to own at least 100 shares. I wouldn't, I, let me say this. Do not buy 100 shares of Royal Caribbean stock in order to get the onboard credit. That's not a good idea. You should buy Royal Caribbean stock or any stock because you think it's a good solid investment. You think it's a you know, good way to spend money so that later on down the line, you'll make more money out of it. So, yeah. Uh, Christy Lee, do you think I have a chance of going to Alaska September 21? This is a bummer. I think there's a chance. And not to quote, uh, Dumb and Dumber, right? Where it's like, so you're telling me there's a chance. Like, it's not that bad, but there is a chance. Yes. Um, but what it is, is it 1%? Is it 80%? 99%? I have no idea. I think it's way too early to know exactly. Um, so we have a little more information to go before that. So, hey, Jason Chen is here. We're just wondering if Quantum has shows and or buffets in the recent sailing departing from Singapore. They haven't restarted yet, uh, Jason. They've restart December 1. So we're about two weeks away from, from getting all the information on that. So we've got a, I missed a, this comment here from uh, Mikey who writes, in my opinion, the only time the key makes sense is when you're traveling solo and plan to get the internet package and you're traveling in a balcony or below. I generally, uh, that's generally, I would agree with that. I would say that you should, if you're not staying in a suite, you're not diamond and crown and anchor. So you're below diamond and crown and anchor society. And you are already going to buy the internet anyway. Uh, that those are the three things I look for for when buying the key. But even then, again, I kind of say it's not worth it. Jason Chen with the super chat. Thank you, Jason. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, for some reason, your photos, the pair character bowing down saying thank you. I don't know why the image didn't work there, but Google broke its photos. Thank you, Jason, for the super chat. It's very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. Uh, Shay Tings, will the cruise line jack up the price when cruising starts back up? Uh, jack up the price? No. Um, it, it, this is interesting. It's a good point you brought up. So when cruises shut down, everyone was like, oh boy, guys, cruise prices, they're going to plummet. I thought they were going to go down as well. Um, I thought, less. no one wants to go on a cruise right now. So prices are just going to go like through the basement, right? And what ended up happening, that may have been actually true for some in, in certain scenarios in 2020, but for 2021, Royal Caribbean's booked really well for 21. Like there's actually a lot of people who basically just said, okay, well, 2020 is not happening. We're going to push off our spring break, our summer vacation, our Thanksgiving break, all these cruises we have for 2020, people just move them to next year. So there's a lot of bookings actually in 21. And so prices for 2021 are pretty much where they would be if coronavirus and the shutdown had never happened. Now, could that change? Absolutely. I think that obviously Royal Caribbean is very, the prices of a Royal Caribbean cruise are very susceptible to the effects of supply and demand, right? If cruises restart and there's only, you know, let's say three or four ships to start with and everyone wants to get on there, they're booked really well. Sure. Prices could go up from that standpoint. Um, they could equally go down, you know, if things don't go so well or there's other issues, I don't know. Um, but there isn't, I'm not, Shay, I don't think there's going to be necessarily like, you know, cruises are going to restart and then they're going to hit this magic button and all of a sudden the price, it's like an episode of The Price is Right where the one becomes a two. Like, eh, I don't think it's going to be quite like that. Um, anything's possible, but I think a lot of it is going to be really based on how much demand there is uh, going forward right there. So, um, I see Brent Ferguson is here. Hello, Emma. And baby Olivia, hope you're doing well. My mama's child too. Is that based on full capacity? I'm sorry. Uh, I think you were talking to, that was in reference to something else, but I, can you reset your question with the first part of that so I can, I can catch up on that. Uh, Tony Diaz with the super chat. Thank you, Tony. With that microphone, you look like you're at a piano. All you need is the chip tip jar. Then again, if you're singing, you wouldn't be getting this super chat. Love you. <laughs> Thank you, Tony Diaz. Right, I, this is kind of like the microphone they have, like at the piano bar, like the schooner bar, and it's like, all right, everybody, you know, as I'm playing, you know, music. All right, coming up next, we'll, let's, uh, you know, who likes uh, Neil Diamond? Hands holding hands, reaching out, touching me, touching. Come on, everybody, get into it. Sweet Caroline. Good times never felt so good. I do. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it like that. <laughs> Jess Gordon. <laughs> Stop singing. <laughs> Jess Gordon with the super chat. Thank you, Jess. My, uh, let me see if I can, uh, if I can get the photos working here. My, my, can I help you? Uh, <laughs> Dave Lucas, what's the one thing, anything could, that Royal Caribbean could add to the key, which would flip your thoughts and make it a must purchase? Ooh, I would say if you could get unlimited access without specific hours to signature activities like water slides or, um, you know, like right now when you, the access you get to things like shows, water slides, the key, um, North star, they're very limited. The sky pad, it's like you have like one hour a day for a couple days of the cruise. If they just say it's like a fast pass line, there's two lines, people with the key without, then I would say it would be totally worth it right there. So, uh, Stacey, do you like independence or freedom better? I would say freedom because freedom just got refurbished. She was the last ship to get a full re refurbishment. So, yeah, yeah. Keith says, what a terrible time to join the live stream. I'm so sorry. See, this is all Tony Diaz's fault here, guys. He told me. I should sing right now. Jordan G, what's the number one tip you could give a first time cruiser? Use a travel agent. Really and truly, it will change up. A good travel agent can save you money, can help answer your questions, can make can 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 be your advocate along the way. It's not about booking a cruise. Anybody can book a cruise. It's not very difficult. But there's a lot that goes into uh, everything that that there's so many things you you don't know what you don't know, and this is very true of cruises and. Travel agents, by the way, are free to you. A good travel agent should cost you nothing extra to use. That's my best, that's my best uh, recommendation right there. 
That's number one. There's a lot of other great things you can do as well. That's number one. So, uh, Catherine Bentley was singing with me. Thank you, Catherine. See, at least somebody recognizes talent out there. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Kenny says, thanks, Tony. Yep, it's it's Tony's fault, guys. Uh, don't look at me. We're all good over here. So, uh, Kirk, Florida-based travel agents, the best one to use or who? It doesn't matter where they are, they're based. In 2020, where your travel agent is based is irrelevant. Um, I will tell you that I think when it comes to, you can use any of them. And of course, full disclosure, we do have a sponsor uh, of, of RollerCarmianBlog.com. That is uh, MEI Travel. And so I do recommend them. Um, they're our sponsor. But the fact where they're located is irrelevant because nobody goes into an office anymore to talk to their travel agent. Just not the way it is right there. So um, I think YouTube is like dying, guys, because I don't know about you guys, but like some of these like photos and like some people's like avatars here and the super chat aren't working. Like they're like broken photos. And I'm trying to like open a new tab to try to get this live stream in there and it's not working. So I think somebody broke Google or bro broke YouTube again. I have to say, I hate to say it that way, but well, that's all right. We're already 45 minutes into the show here. We've already started singing. Um, and thank you all to the chat for the shout outs to the MEI travel agents. A lot of great folks in here. Very, very helpful. So, um, let's see, Jess, will I be able to sail to the Caribbean in May and December to the Bahamas in May? It remains to be seen, Jess. I wish I could, it's it's the question everyone's been asking pff, since you know March of this year, or, uh, and the answer is we just simply don't know. My voice broke YouTube. It did, Tony. Um, but yeah, uh, Jess, um, it's just it's unknown at this point. Um, it, it's not to say that it won't. It's not to say that it will. Um, there's just too much up in the air at this point to really know about that. So, yeah, Kenny, YouTube was on the other day. It's just weird. Do you are you guys seeing everybody else's like avatar, or is it just me? Because it looks like. I, I, I've tried, like, if I reload this page, it's going to die. So I tried opening a new tab, and your Neil Diamond impression crashed the whole thing. Well, listen, if my Neil Diamond impression really did, it's more of a schooner bar impression than a Neil Diamond impression. However, um, if that really did do that, my goodness, I have, with great power comes great responsibility. What is your superpower? I can take down YouTube with one song. Can you rob a bank? Nope, I can't do that at all. Um, a team is any upcoming cruises to Canada and what ship has replaced grandeur? Will there be more activities for young adults? They replaced uh, grandeur with enchantment out of Baltimore um, and upcoming cruises to Canada, whatever's on the schedule there. Um, enchantment of the seas. I think Anthem goes there as well. So there's still some options there. So uh, Aristotle. Hey, Matt, I don't remember if you have answered this already. Do you think the vaccine will be mandatory prior to cruising that we actually did answer that, but I'm not happy to answer it again. I don't think it'll be mandatory. I don't think that I did, I do not believe that is going to be the case because I don't believe, guys, that, especially in 2021, that any cruises operated by Royal Caribbean are going to be, if you have the vaccine, like it's safe. Like I think there's still going to be rec regulations there. I think the air on the side of caution, it's going to certainly help your cause to obviously avoid getting yourself sick. But um, no, no, it's not going to be. I don't think I do not foresee that. Again, I could be wrong, guys. Listen, I am a very bad predictor, but I don't foresee that being the case at all. Royal Caribbean has not given any indication, any indication that that would be the case. So, um, <laughs> Tony Diaz is proposing to Beth from MEI Travel. She's a very lovely lady, Tony, but let her do her job. <laughs> uh, Keith Mauerman, any word on how volunteers will be selected for simulated things? Uh, unfortunately not. There's not been uh, anything there to, 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 we don't know yet. Lifewell Cruz, hello and welcome. Just want to say hi. I always appreciate your cheerful outlook during your lives. Thank you, my friend. Glad to see you here as well. Appreciate that. So, uh, no, Anthem doesn't go to Baltimore. Anthem goes out of Cape Liberty, New Jersey, right? Did I say she goes to Baltimore? That'd be wrong, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Kelly Hardy, do you need a new Magic 8-Ball? I do. You know why? Because the old one was evil. Like, it was always giving me bad information. It was just no bueno. So, I'll have to get one eventually. I'll, I'll go to a, I'll go to like a tag sale or something because I'm not buying. Last one I bought on Amazon and it came, I'm not kidding, guys. Now, granted, it wasn't an on-brand one. But it was a Russian Magic 8-Ball. The box had Russian letters on it. And, you know, it was just not a happy Magic 8-Ball. Like, everything we asked, it was like, nope, you guys are in deep trouble. <laughs> so, Randy Patrick with the super chat. Thank you, Randy. Woo! Thank you. Sorry I'm late to the game. 368 days of the Harmony Group Cruise, sir. I'm actually getting excited. I am getting excited. I can't wait. Yes. Love it. 
All right, we got some uh, housekeeping here to take care of. We got some spammers and trolls, and yeah, we're good. All right. Um, Aristotle, do you think Wonder of the Seas will be selling out of the U.S. after the Asian sailings? No, I think, uh, quite frankly, I think it's going to go to Asia, and I think it's going to be there. I don't think there'll be any change to that one. Uh, Brian says, one of the months, one of these months, I'm actually going to go on a cruise. I'll try not to ruin it for everybody. Listen, Brian, I am going on record, okay? And I'm betting that uh, at 15 minutes into this live stream, no one's ever going to remember that I said this. But I'm going on record saying that I... Matt Hotchberg, under my own volition, without being coerced by any outside forces, do, do solemnly swear that I would enjoy and look forward to going on a roller coaster cruise with Len Testa. Josh, what do you think of the Sea Breeze story? Does roller make you do, does roller make you feel comfortable? It's certainly a lot more comfortable than than what happened there. Um, Josh, I think that from what I've seen thus far, it's, it's a little confusing why they didn't they they clearly did not adopt the um, healthy sale panel protocols. So um, uh, it, not all of it by any means. So it's kind of, it's, it's unfortunately it created, it, it's, it's given a black eye to the cruise industry regardless. And uh, I think over the next couple of days, we might get a little clearer picture as to what's going on and, and what happened and all these kinds of things. But there were a number of things there that kind of struck me as interesting. So uh, Aristotle, have I, ever, have I invested in any Royal Caribbean stock? No, I don't own any Royal Caribbean stock. I mean, I own like, you know, I have a 401k and a IRA. So if they own Royal Caribbean stock in those, are, I don't know about that, but I have not personally purchased Royal Caribbean stock. So, uh, just as the cruise line said that they will require guests to get the COVID vaccine before cruise resume. No, they have not. They have not. Uh, Keith, what's your favorite tropical fruit? Uh, an orange. I don't know. Is that tropical? <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> um, I've never been asked that question. I'll be honest with you. Do you think the protocols will kill the fun of cruising? No, it'll just change things. Um, uh, Hiro. Uh, I, no, it won't kill it. I mean, at the end of the day, Roller Caribbean has said they want to make sure it is still a fun experience right there. Kirk, can you stay at a port for a week and catch the next ship? Sure, you just have to book it. Like you have to, The key is not so much like, can you stay in the port? The key for you is, can you... Is there availability for you to book the cruise? But absolutely. In fact, Kirk, um, there have been, I remember we were on a Royal Caribbean blog group cruise and one of the people on the group cruise actually like on day two booked the next sailing while still on board. There was obviously availability there, which was incredible. And I was just so jealous that they were able to do that. I looked at my wife. I was like, can we do that? It's not fair. They're doing it. Why can't we? Well, I didn't win that conversation, that argument, but yeah, yeah. Um, Jordan, what are some can't miss places activities on Harmony of the Seas? Ooh, Izumi Hibachi. That's definitely a great one. The water slide, the racer water slides, love them. A lot of fun. The escape room, fantastic, worth the money, definitely must do. Uh, the uh on Harmony, it is uh Greece. Yeah, yeah, Greece, the Broadway musical, must see stuff. And I, I think you can't go wrong with the shows in the Aqua Theater as well. They're really, really good. So where is the eight balls upstairs and in still the storage while we were cleaning out the store? I have to get a I've been shopping for bookshelves, but Mary Peloso, what ship do you think would be best if you didn't care about the ports and just wanted to stay on the ship the whole time? Brilliance of the Seas. Great ship. Love it. If uh, Don Goldstein is still here, he will tell you it is amazing. Uh, Jeff, how many more cruises are you already booked on in 21? Uh, where's my MEI travel agents? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I have like seven or eight. I, well, yeah, like seven or eight, but I haven't really been booking a lot because of the whole shutdown. I'm just waiting to see a little more firmer picture, but let me tell you something. I'm going to go on record again. So guys, if, uh, again, for the record, I, Matt Hotchberg, do solemnly swear that when cruises do resume, revenue sailings do resume of Royal Caribbean International, I will go on more cruises in 2021 than I've ever gone on in one calendar year with or without Brian McNichols. There you go. Uh, Don is here. Commander Goldstein says, yes, sir. Brilliance is brilliant. It's a great ship. Love it for that. What's in the cup? It's all water. It's all water. Uh, Brian, do you think masks will be mandatory in January, 2022? Too early to know, man. Um, they are, there are a temporary policy, but how temporary? don't know i think it's way too early to uh to to know that so michelle from canada thanks for the advice on lift and shift we lift and shifted our january 2020 cruise and it was an amazing experience and we got our same room oasis symphony that's awesome love that love that 
Brilliance versus Navigator? I'd pick Navigator. I'm a big ship kind of guy, Kenny. At the end of the day, I, I, I take Navigator there. Uh, my mom, Michelle, can you purchase the? Can you imagine the Windjam era during a pandemic? Well, there are gonna be changes to it. My my mom's child on Quantum of the Seas in Singapore. Um, there'll be you. There are actually going to be QR codes. You'll take your phone, and you'll order through your phone instead of getting up there. So, yeah. Uh, Pamela, will they allow face shields? They'll allow face shields if you're wearing a face mask. You still need to have a mask because a face shield in and of itself is, does not protect. You need a mask. You want to wear a shield on top of that? Totally fine. Um, but you can't just wear the face shield. You need to have a mask as well. So, uh, Nick, what's up, dude? Voyager balcony can be removed. The balcony divider, Nick? Yes. Well, uh, wait a minute. No, I mean, I forgot. Some of the Voyager class ships you can't. I don't think they can. I think it's just Mariner and Navigator. You can remove them on there. So, <laughs> Kenny says, okay, I chose wisely. Good, good, good. Where does my Windjamer pronunciation come from? It's an inside joke, Megan. Um, on my first Royal Caribbean cruise, my youngest sister, we were all on this family cruise, and my youngest sister said, uh, you know, we were talking about where we were going to meet, and she's like, okay, we'll meet at the Windjamer. And we're like, where? She's like, the Windjamer? Like, do you mean the Windjammer? She thought it was a French word. So she called it Windjamer. I don't even know if she remembers this story anymore. Anyway, um, so that's kind of my own, including you guys on this inside joke. We call it the Windjamer. It sounds more professional, a little more fancy. All right, guys. On that note, going to head on out of here. Check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice, all that. There's a ton. There's like four new blog posts up there today. We've got a new YouTube video coming out tomorrow. I think you're going to like this video tomorrow. Kind of, if you, let me tell you something. You see this cup? You don't. But if, the, if you think this cup is definitely half full, if you're a half full kind of guy or you want to, you want to hear good news tomorrow. Make yourself feel good about your cruises happening. Check out tomorrow's YouTube video. More on that there. Um, I want to say some thank yous for the Super Chats this evening. Randy Patrick, thank you for the Super Chat. Jess Gordon, thank you for the Super Chat. Tony Diaz, thank you for the Super Chat, my friend. Always happy to sing for you. Jason Chen, thank you for the Super Chat. Sharon Stockman, thank you for the double Super Chat. Javon, thank you for the Super Chat. And Kim Oakland, Thank you for the super chat and thank you to everybody in here for being awesome, for being a part of the fun and for joining me here on YouTube. Be sure to check out royalcaribbeanblog.com. And again, we're live here every Monday. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. A lot of people don't subscribe. It's free to subscribe to the channel. All you do is get a notification when I'm live. It's great. Enjoy. All right, guys, have a great rest of your night. Have a great week, everybody. Do something fun. Stay safe out there. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.